What's up, my name is Technova here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another optimization guide. In this video, we'll be going through optimizing Icarus and a little bit of Windows on top of that. If you'd like to squeeze more performance out of your computer, do make sure to check the description down below for Windows 10, 11 and Nvidia optimization guides, which will help you get more performance out of your computer and of course make games run a bit smoother, including Icarus. This video is specifically going to focus on this game here. So to begin, first of all, it's a very good idea to update Windows and of course your graphics drivers on top of that, whether you download them from the official websites or through a program like NVIDIA GeForce Experience, it doesn't really matter, just make sure everything's up to date as that will usually help you get better performance out of games. When you've got the basics out of the way, let's go ahead and navigate to where the game is located. For this, I'll be opening up Steam, then I'll select Icarus, right click, hover over manage, and then click browse local files to navigate to where the game is installed. Inside of here, simply right click Icarus.exe and click properties. Then inside of here, head across to the compatibility tab and make sure to disable full screen optimizations. Then click change high DPI settings. And inside of here, make sure that this bottom tick box is checked and you have application selected. Then click OK and OK here. Now that we're done with this, let's go ahead and tell Windows to run this on our best possible graphics card, which is especially important if you're on a laptop, notebook, or computer with multiple graphics cards, including an iGPU. To do so, click at the very top up here, and we'll be copying this address. Then hit Start and type in GPU, where we'll be opening graphics settings. Inside of here, make sure that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on and under graphics performance preference, select desktop app, then click browse. When this window opens up, click at the very top, paste and hit enter to navigate across to where the game is installed. Simply locate and double click on Icarus.exe and it should be added to the list as such. Click options right underneath the name of the game here, then choose high performance from this list of graphics cards, then click save and we're basically done in this menu here. Click back at the very top left, then home, and inside of here, we'll be heading into the gaming section. On the Xbox Game Bar tab, make sure that this is turned off unless you specifically use Xbox Game Bar features. Then head across to game mode and make sure that this is turned on. As you probably know by now, anything that records your screen usually costs a bit of performance, and for some people, you may have a Shadow Play-like feature enabled by default in the Xbox Game Bar, known as Capture. You used to be able to turn it off here, but what you need to do now is hit Start and type in Game Bar and open up the Xbox Game Bar. Inside of here, click Settings at the very top, then head across to the Capturing section and make sure that Record in the background while I'm playing a game is turned off. This way, there'll be no Shadow Play-like feature and all of your performance will be available for the game to use. That being said, your PC does have a limited number of resources and of course, optimizing is really getting the game to use as much as possible. Something you'll find usually gives you a performance boost, especially on PCs that find themselves quite full and bloated, is cleaning out temporary files, cache, etc, etc. Hit start and type in cleanup, we will be opening disk cleanup as administrator. Simply click OK when you have your Windows drive selected, wait for it to scan, and inside of this window here, you can select everything to be cleared and deleted, except for recycle bin and thumbnails. These are usually the two that I leave unchecked, as I don't like regenerating all the thumbnails on my computer. And of course, the recycle bin you can go through later, making sure you're not deleting anything you may need later and empty it out on your own. Then when you're happy deleting the items you have selected, click OK, then delete files, and it'll run through these temporary files on your computer, deleting them and saving you a couple gigabytes space. If you have the game installed on a drive other than your Windows drive, you'll want to launch this again as administrator, select that drive instead, and rinse and repeat the same steps. Now that we're done with clearing out temporary files on our computer, further tackling limited resources, do make sure that you limit the number of programs running in the background while you're playing the game. The more that you have running at once, the less resources will be available for the game, and of course, you'll end up with worse performance. Something that has huge impact on this are programs that start up with your computer. Hold Control Shift and then press Escape to open up the Windows Task Manager. Inside of here, head across to the Startup tab at the very top, and then sort by Status. Everything that's listed as enabled will start up when your computer starts up, and of course, slow down, and of course, increase the time that your computer will take to start up. You can right click and disable anything in here that you don't want starting up with your computer. You'll want to try and keep this list as small as possible. If you're a power user and you'd like to go even further, you can head across to the services tab at the very top, then click open services. 
In here, you can sort by startup type and everything listed as automatic starts up with your computer. You can once again, right click an item, click properties, and then change it from automatic to manual start. This way, when you open a program that needs a service, it'll open it up automatically instead of starting up with your computer, which means there's fewer things running in the background and of course, more resources available for Icarus to take. Finally, the last few things, if you use third-party overlays such as Discord, you may want to disable them and see what kind of performance you get as anything that draws on top of the game will take away a tiny bit of performance, some things more than others. I lose quite a few FPS with Discord's overlay. On top of this, if your graphics card is pinned to 100%, you can try and disable hardware acceleration in other programs such as Steam and Discord. That way they'll use more of your CPU instead of your GPU and leave more of your GPU available for the game to take. Finally, if you're on a laptop, you may want to try playing the game on an external display as on some older devices and certain computers nowadays, you'll get better performance through a dedicated graphics card if you're using an external display rather than the built-in one. Now, with all of that basic Windows optimization out of the way, if you'd like more tips to get more FPS, do check the description below once again. For the rest of this video, however, we'll be opening up Icarus as we'll be changing in-game settings. Before you do so, you'll see a pop-up like this. Play Icarus in DirectX 11 or DirectX 12 mode. Usually playing in DirectX 12 will give you more FPS as it's a newer framework. However, I would assume this was added after the fact or sometime during development, so it's not based around DirectX 12. Instead, it's been built around DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 may have performance impacts. You'll have to go ahead and do some testing on your own in order to see which one's better for your current setup. I know that you need to run it in DX12 mode if you'd like to use ray tracing. However, ray tracing is something that will completely eat and destroy your computer's performance, so you may not want to use that at all anyways. And click play. With all of that said, this game was still very recently released, and of course there's a lot of tweaking and bug fixes that need to be made to get this to a good state. So do keep that in mind, things should get better over time, but this video should still be accurate long into the future, as settings will remain mostly the same. I'll quickly hop into a game here. So why exactly did I load into the game first? Well, just to give you an example of what kind of FPS I'm getting. At 1440p on a 1080 Ti, I'm getting around 28 FPS, 29 FPS, which is far from reasonable, especially when the game looks like such. The FPS really shouldn't be that low, but it's still relatively early in development and things will be changing as it goes along. However, if we head into options by hitting escape, then settings, and finally display at the very top, we'll start by customizing some settings here. As you can see, I'm currently running everything on high, so that's rather disappointing as we'll be dropping most of these lower because of course, lower means more FPS. Starting at the very top, you should be playing in full screen mode for the best FPS possible, and your resolution should be one supported by your display so that it doesn't end up blurry. Scrolling down further to video, make sure VSync is turned off for less input latency, but you can turn this on if you're experiencing screen tearing where the top half of your screen doesn't match the bottom half. Frame limit should be pushed all the way to the right unless your graphics card's maxing out and you cannot record using something like OBS if you're a streamer, etc. and your OBS ends up lagging, dropping frames, you'll want to lower this to just below what FPS you're getting in game. For everyone else, however, you'll be raising this as high as possible to use the most of your computer and get the highest FPS possible. Resolution scale is something you can play with after changing everything else on this page, as this will make your game blurry the lower it goes, but of course rendering the game at a lower resolution means that you'll be getting higher FPS. Motion blur should be set all the way down to zero for completely disabled, as having this on will result in you not seeing as much, especially when looking around. Though of course that's completely up to you and how you'd like the game to look and feel. Scrolling down to quality, however, we get to some settings that'll actually gain you some FPS. Do note that most of these will require you to restart your game, as you'll see a little triangle next to some of these options here. So currently we're at 25 to 30 FPS, really low. Let's go ahead and crank it all the way down to low to begin with in the overall section, as that'll lower absolutely everything. View distance will cause you to drop FPS quite dramatically, though it is something that doesn't require your game to restart, so you can play around with this after the fact when we're done optimizing here. I usually have this on medium to see quite far, but of course you can drop this down to low for more FPS. Post-processing are effects that are added afterwards, such as bloom, ambient occlusion, depth of field, etc, etc. So you'd want to have this on low for the best visibility possible, and of course it'll gain you a couple FPS. The impact of this shouldn't be too high. 
Shadows, however, will have a huge impact, especially if you're using ray tracing, which you hopefully aren't, as that'll really kill your FPS. Setting this as low as possible is something you'll want to do to gain as many FPS as possible. Max Shadow Cascades can be left at 1 or 2, though once again the lower this is, the more FPS you can expect. I'll be setting this down to 1. Textures depend on how much VRAM your graphics card has and shouldn't really impact performance as long as you're not reaching the limit of your graphics card. A1080 Ti that I have has 12 gigs of VRAM I think, and as you can see on the right hand side, they tell you how much VRAM the game will take for each of these settings. Low being 2GB, medium being 4, high being 8, and epic being 10GB, so do make sure your graphics card has enough VRAM and pick accordingly. It won't really affect FPS unless you're pushing it higher than what your graphics card can take, or taking all of its resources by setting it right on the nose. You'll want to have it on just one below what your graphics card can handle. I of course will be keeping this on say high, as I would think Epic would cost you a couple of FPS, maybe there's a couple of extra things that are added. Anyways, texture streaming pool size, having this higher will increase the amount of VRAM that's used, but it'll reduce texture pop-in. As they mentioned on the top right, set this based on your video card memory. Unlike the previous one where it gives you gigabyte suggestions, this one's really just leaving you up to guess. If you have your textures set to higher numbers, push this further to the right, otherwise leave this further to the left. I have it set to high, which is using 8GB of RAM, so judging that this one over here goes to about 12K, I'll drop this to about maybe 8,000 for 8GB above. You can set it to 4,000 for 4 gigs of VRAM, 2,000 for 2 gigs of VRAM, etc, etc. The lowest is 2,000, so that scale makes sense to me. Effects are for things like reflections and atmospheric effects, so having this set to lower values will result in higher FPS. I'll be leaving this at low. Same goes for foliage over here, it sets the density of grass. This is a rather scenic game and not so much a Twitch shooter, so you may want to have a better looking experience over FPS, though you'd probably come across to this guide just to get this game playable. You may want to set this to low or medium, depending if you'd like a smoother experience or a better looking experience. I wouldn't bother pushing it up too high, as it will probably kill your FPS. Shading as well, this sets the quality of hair shading. Of course I'll be setting this as low as possible, as I'm not going to be staring at hairy animals all the time. Anti-aliasing will tank your FPS quite a bit, especially on older graphics cards, but it will get rid of jagged edges. I usually push this as low as possible, as I don't mind jagged edges, I much prefer FPS, though this is up to your preference. I'll set this to low for now. Use Simple Building Shadows is currently set to off on the lowest preset, but I recommend turning this on as it'll simplify shadow geometry on buildings and disable detailed shadows on the standard building geometry, leading to higher FPS. Disable lighting effects should be set to off as having lights and particles affect how the scene looks is usually a pretty good thing. You can set this to on if you'd like to squeeze more FPS, though I'll keep this off just for a better looking experience. Tessellation improves landscape visuals providing more height variation and surface detail and you can usually have this on without any performance impact. Volumetric clouds over here, as mentioned, can be expensive on old hardware, but of course for newer hardware, you can leave this on without worrying about it, you can turn it off for higher FPS. Finally, disable player light shadows, I'll be leaving this off as I would like my player to light the environment as I move around, that'll add to the experience, but of course, higher FPS, you can turn this on. Scrolling down further, Nvidia DLSS should absolutely be turned on, and what you have this set to depends on your setup, and of course what you want the game looking like. The higher you have this set, the more hard work AI is going to have to do to try and make the game look normal again, as it will render at a lower resolution the higher the setting is pushed, and scale it up using AI. AMD Fidelity FX over here is usable on all graphics cards, not just AMD graphics cards, and not just ones that support DLSS as far as I understand. So you can set this here to whatever you'd like, and you should get better FPS, especially on graphics cards that don't support RTX. Finally, ray tracing should be disabled if you value FPS at all. And that's really about it for the in-game optimization. All I'm going to do from here is click back, and I'll be closing out of the game to my desktop, then relaunching it, and we'll see what kind of FPS difference it makes. And as you can see, I'll wait for the game to load in for a second, it does look quite a bit worse, and there's a major shimmering effect noticeable under these trees here. This has to do with the shadow level that we have set, and of course we can customize it a little bit to try and fix this. Not to mention the major pop-in.
But without commenting on that too much, as you can see, I'm now getting a smooth 100 FPS, which is higher than 60 and arguably higher than you need for a game like this. So if you find yourself in a position like this, where you're not experiencing too much stuttering, now is where you go in and further fine tune your settings to get yourself a better looking experience. So first of all, handling this shimmering effect with shadows under trees, etc., etc. I'll hit escape, head into settings, display, and scrolling down to shadows over here, I'll try raising this up to say medium. It may have something to do with the shadow cascades, but I doubt it. I'll click back, and of course I need to restart my game. And as you can see, shadows were made quite a bit better, though the shimmering effect is still rather noticeable. Maybe it's got to do with the shadow cascades. This at least we can raise without having to restart our game. But that's definitely not it. Well, as for what could be causing that, I'm not too sure. If you do find out, make sure to leave it in the comments down below. And if I haven't already pinned a solution, I'll pin your comment. Anyways, heading back to the optimization, now I'm getting about 80 FPS, that shadow effect by itself cost me about 15 to 20 FPS. Quite pricey, but it does make the game look quite a bit better from what it was before. Hitting escape, heading into settings, scrolling down to AMD Fidelity FX. If we set this to performance or maybe quality so we can see the difference, as you can see, the shimmering effect seems to have paused or at least got a lot less noticeable. On top of this, however, I'm now getting 100 FPS and the game looks a little bit blurry when I'm moving around which isn't too much of a bad thing, especially if you stand still and look at the environment. The game is running noticeably smoother and the shimmering effect was somewhat tamed. If we set it down to performance, you'll see that we should be getting much higher FPS, but the game does look quite a bit worse, which is why I'd usually leave this on quality or ultra quality. So quality or ultra quality, you can see it's more than playable and of course gives you a pretty big FPS boost of about 30-ish percent, which is really good, especially in a game like this. Once again, I'm using an NVIDIA 1080 Ti, so not only is it not AMD specific, but it's not specific to graphics cards that support RTX. So that's really about it for this guide. This game is still relatively early, and of course, we'll need a ton of optimization to get to a really good space. But I would think at this level over here, it's more than smooth enough to play the game, and if you're fine with the little bits of blurriness that you get from AMD FSR, it's probably what you'll be completing the game on. So of course, as with every optimization guide out there, you'll need to tweak the settings to be in your favor, and of course, around your experience that you'd like to get from the game. So that's about it for this quick video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot. And once again, check the description down below for other guides related to this, where you can get more out of your computer. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.